Quran recite or recite at the end, inshallah. Okay. 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 Sister um, Adiba, please be ready to start recording. When you're ready, please let me know. We're ready. You're ready? Okay. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May the peace, mercy, and choices blessings of Allah be upon you all. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I begin in the name of God, the gracious, the merciful. Rabbish Rahli Sadri Wayasirli Amri Wahlul Ukdatam Millisani Yaftahu Kauli. Okay, welcome to the Legacy Tour. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so happy that you joined us today. Um, I had a little bit of housekeeping that everybody will be on mute and this will be recorded. So later on, inshallah, when the session is over, we will get this recording up on YouTube, on Facebook, and so you will be able to view it again. We will have a question and answer session at the end. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat box and we will share them with the speaker. Welcome to the Legacy Tour. We, we are going to go, we're going on journeys with our esteemed scholars to explore the lives of Muslim women throughout the ages who rose to great heights. They overcame incredible odds and left a lasting legacy for those to come after. I'm your host, Aram Imam from Toronto. And today uh, for our legacy tour, later on, you will hear Afia Zafresh who will be reciting the Quran. She's 10 years old. And today, for today's legacy tour, we have the honor of having with us Dr. Halima Bukarusha from Malaysia. She is uh, 12 hours ahead of us and assist uh, Dr. Halima. Um, inshallah, this will be broadcast all over Canada. And Dr. Halima, um, she's an assistant professor at Ahmed Ibrahim Faculty of Law at the International Islamic University in Malaysia since 2008. She obtained her PhD in Islamic law from the University of Algiers in 2007. Dr. Halima, she's published a book, five chapters in the book and several articles in reference journals. She's also presented several papers in international conferences and she's conducted several workshops and speeches. She's also supervised several masters and PhD students. And her services in the field of Dawa started early in the 90s in Algeria, where she's from. And she's contributed to several lectures, workshops, training sessions, and her international profile. It grew in 2008 when she joined the International Islamic University in Malaysia. Um, she's been exposed to multi multi-disciplines and multinational communities. And during this period, she's been able to present her thoughts on Dawa education, family matters in an integrated approach. And this approach has resulted in a series of lectures and presentations in universities, radio workshops, and additions to international Dawa symposiums, symposiums. And today we have her here to tell us about Asia, the wife of Pharaoh, or also known as the mother, the step, not the stepmother, the foster mother, the adoptive mother of Musa alayhi salam. So I'm excited to know because of all the four women mentioned in the Quran, she's the person whom I feel I know the least about, even though I feel in my life I've been inspired her by her the most. So I'd like to learn a little bit more and delve deeper into her character and her achievements and what struggles she went through. Dr. Halima. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyihi al-kareem, alayhi salawatu rabbi wa salamu. Amma ba'd salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear sisters, uh, I'm very happy to be with you in this um, morning in Malaysia and uh, night in Canada. <laughs> Subhanaka Rabbi. So alhamdulillah, we are very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gave us this opportunity. And he gave us this uh, time and barakah in this time to, uh, inshallah, learn and uh, study uh, one of uh, the role, Muslim role model that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned her in the Quran al Kareem. Like you know, Asya radiallahu anha, uh, Nabi sallam told us that she is one of the perfected uh, women, you know. So we have uh, Asia, we have uh, 
radiallahu anha, we have Maryam alayhi salam, we have Khadija radiallahu anha, and we have Fatima, uh, the daughter of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa So as uh, she is one of the perfected women, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned her in two different occasions uh, in the Quran al karim two different places. Number one in Surah Al-Qasas, uh, the ayah number nine. Okay, you, you can write the, the surah and the number of the ayah. Later when you read, whenever you do your khatman, you read the Quran, when you reach this one, this specific ayah, uh, you reflect what you have learned uh, from today, inshallah. The second uh, occasion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, Asya alayhi salam in uh, Surah Al-Tahreem, ayah 11, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving her as a role model for الذين آمنوا الذين آمنوا the believers men women she is the role model for men and for women and he mentioned that while uh, uh, Fir'aun was torturing her because she accepted Islam uh, uh, Deen Musa alayhi salam al uh, he was torturing her to death and she was praying uh, please ya Allah build uh, for me a house uh, in al-Jannah. So this is what's goal, a house in al-Jannah, Rida Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awalan uh, wa akhiran. So today, uh, in this talk, I want to cover the first ayah, uh, ayah of Surah Al-Qasas, ayah number nine, that speaks about uh, Asya alayhi salam, one, she wanted to protect Musa when he was a baby, and of course, Fir'aun want to kill him, and she wanted to protect him. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this event in one ayah, ayah number nine of Surah Al-Qasas. But today I am inviting you, dear sisters, to, to read this ayah and to do tadabbur to this ayah. Of course, Allah summarized all the events in one ayah, but it means a lot. It means you have to go deeper and to read our Quran and this specific ayah with tadabbur to get the lessons and to apply the lessons. Otherwise, there is no point why he is going to uh, mention the Asya radiallahu uh, anha in Al Quran Al Karim, if only for us to read it as ayah or to memorize it because I am memorizing Surah Al Qasas, so I need to memorize the ayah number nine, and that's all. What about um, the lessons that I am learning from her? Not so much. How can I apply it? I don't know. So this is not tadabbur the Quran al Karim, and this is not. It doesn't reflect a good and perfect relationship with us and with Kitab Allah al Quran al Karim. So uh, today I am going to to speak about Ayat al Qasas, uh, Ayat al Nine from Ayat al Qasas. So you know the story that uh, Umm Musa, the mother of Musa, threw him. Uh, to the uh, in the Neil River, and suddenly he reached uh, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He reached Fir'aun Palace. Of course, the soldiers carried him and took him to Fir'aun. Fir'aun, okay, this is a baby boy, okay. And the face, what about the face? He is not an Egyptian boy, he is. Bani Israel boy, I can see it from his face. So now, what is the law? The law is to kill him. No point. No discussion. The point is to kill him. So in this specific moment, the role of uh, uh, Asia, we can see her role now. She decided to protect Musa alayhi salam. She decided to protect uh, Musa alayhi salam. Uh, protecting Musa alayhi salam and saving him, uh, is it an easy mission? Definitely, it's not an easy mission. Why? Uh, because protecting Musa, it means she needs to break Fir'aun law. Oh, breaking Fir'aun law, yes. And you know, my dear sisters, Fir'aun uh, law is not a normal law. Why? Because he, he believes that he is God. So it means his law is a God's law. God's law are always 
sacred. No one can touch them. No one can change them. So forget about it. But subhanallah, this wonderful lady, this overqualified Muslima, she managed to convince Fir'aun not to kill Musa alayhi salam. That's all? No. She managed also to convince Fir'aun to adopt Musa as a son. Allahu Akbar. Can you see the big distance between just don't kill him to adopt him as a son, Fir'aun's son? This is a great achievement. This is great achievement. So, of course, my question whenever I read this ayah is uh, how she managed to do this? How she managed, how she managed to do this? Uh, uh, convincing Fir'aun not to kill Musa, it's an impossible mission for me. Convincing Fir'aun to adopt Musa as a son is a miracle. Sincerely, is a miracle. It's a miracle. And the good news is that Fir'aun was convinced and he adopted Musa as a son and uh, Musa was protected all his life and he was raised in Fir'aun's palace and called the Prince Musa. No one touched him, no one hurt him. He do whatever he wants. He is uh, Fir'aun's son between brackets according to Fir'aun, uh, Musa is uh, God's son. My question, dear sister, how this beautiful lady, she managed to convince Fir'aun. Before giving the details, I want to say something. This ayah, at least for me, when I read this ayah, I feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me uh, and want to show me the importance of convincing, negotiating, and communication skills to empower the Muslim woman. These skills are very important skills. Of course, uh, one in uh, my daily life, when I speak with some ladies, some uh, wives or daughters or sisters, when we are talking about family problems, marital conflict, whatever. So when I start talking about convincing skills, negotiating skills, communication skills, they always, some of them tell me, oh, Dr. Halima, you don't know my husband. You don't know my father. You don't know my brother. He is, he is a very difficult person. He is a very harsh man. You cannot talk to him. My answer always is, I know my dear, I don't know your husband. <laughs> I don't know your father, your son, or your brother. But I know that your husband is not Fir'aun. 100%. Your husband is not Fir'aun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, he gave us in this ayah, ayah Surah Al-Qasas, Ayah 9, he gave us the worst scenario. The worst scenario is Fir'aun. And he gave us also Asya, her strategy, how he managed to convince Fir'aun, how she managed to stop this crime, how she managed to protect Musa, alayhi salam, a very weak baby. So, this ayah is telling me and telling uh, every woman, your husband, any man in your life is not Fir'aun. So the worst scenario is Fir'aun. Your scenario is less and much better. Number two, you have in this ayah, this wonderful lady, she is teaching you the strategy and teaching you convincing skills, negotiating skills, communication skills. Learn from her and apply and go and study and learn and apply. This is the purpose why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this uh, beautiful ayah in Al-Quran Al-Kareem, for us to learn. So yeah, so this is my opinion uh, anyway. 
let's let's uh, read the ayah and try to go deeper and to see and try to discover her her strategy. Uh, Asya radiallahu and her strategy, how she managed to convince Fir'aun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqul fi surat al-qasas al-ayat tasi'a wa qalati mra'atu Fir'aun qurratu ayni li walak la taqtuluh asa an yanfa'ana aw natakhidahu walada wa hum la yash'urun. So the translation of the meaning of this ayah and the wife of Fir'aun said he will be a comfort a comfort of, uh, of the eye for me and for you. Do not kill him. Perhaps he may benefit us or we adopt him as a son. This is the translation of the meaning of uh, the ayah. If we want to study with Tadabbur, this single ayah, one ayah, what we can find? Uh, from my part, I managed to find five very important elements. Five very important elements. Number one, Asya alayhi salam, she understood Fir'aun's personality, Fir'aun's psychology. He believes that he is God. And he is forcing people to believe that he is God. So there is no way to accuse him that his decision is wrong and he is doing something wrong. He is a criminal. He, he shouldn't do that. He is uh, an aggressive and uh, stubborn man. This is not, this is a dead road. She will not reach anything. So she understood, she understood her personality. She knew that he believes he is God, so automatically he refuses to be wrong. There is no way to tell him you are wrong. So that's why she doesn't want him to feel offended. So that's why she is using um, the, her words. She doesn't want him to feel offended. She calmly explained her point of view to him, calmly, very softly. And she did her best not to turn the discussion into conflict. No, I, I don't want conflict. I want to save this baby. I want to protect this baby. She didn't hurt his ego. You know, everyone has ego. But what about a person who believes that he is God? What about his ego? Wow. Can you imagine his ego? So she didn't hurt his ego by insulting him, accusing him, you are criminal, what you are doing is against child rights, blah, 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 this. No, 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 no. She understood her personality. She preferred to choose another tools. So number one, she understood uh, her husband's personality and psychology. What about you and me? Do we know our husband's psychology and personality? We understand them? Uh, no idea. Uh, so this is the first point. Okay. You have a father. You have to understand the personality of your father. In order not to, to have this family conflict and this fighting and all these things. And you have a son, you have to understand his personality. You have a brother, you have to understand his personality. You have a husband, you have to understand his. Doesn't mean all these men, they don't have to understand your person. They have. But today we are discussing the, the role model of Asia. We are talking about uh, um, the woman more, but it's both for both men and women. So number one, she understood her husband's her aunt's personality. Number two, she used positive language. Allahu Akbar. She used a positive language. Her language, if you can see, if you can read the ayah or the translation of the meaning, she was assertive rather than aggressive. She was assertive. Do not kill him. But she wasn't aggressive. No, at all. And she was also, uh, her language was very positive in sense that she was, she was suggesting alternatives and solutions. She is not only creating a problem for Fir'am, you have to break your law. Done. No negotiation. Uh, 
uh, no, she is suggesting some alternative and solution. Perhaps he may benefit us. Let's discuss how he can benefit us. Okay, she's opening doors for discussion. Or we may adopt him as a son. A son, yeah, let's discuss. See how she is opening windows and doors for discussion and moving far around from his point, but I want to kill him. This is my law, to an open area, discussion area, talking area in a positive uh, language. So this is number two. She used a positive language. Number three, she explained the benefit of her point of view. She didn't say, this is my point of view. This is wrong. I know that this is wrong. Any human being can see this is wrong. This is common sense. You don't have common sense. You don't have heart. No, 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 no. She is concentrating more on explaining the benefit of her point of view. What, 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 how can we benefit if we don't kill him? Number four, and this is a very important point also. She understood the concerns and the, the needs, the concerns and the needs and the weaknesses of Fir'auns. And she was focusing on his needs and weakness. Okay. So what is his big concern for him? Okay. His big concern that this child from Bani Israel, when he will grow up, he will kill him. Because this is what a Sahara, okay, the magician told him. But there is one boy from Bani Israel. He will be born this year. And when he will uh, become uh, a man, he will kill you. So this is his concern. This is his concern. But for her, uh, that's why she introduced, uh, can we, we will adopt him as a son. Don't worry. Because if we just not killing him, we will throw him and he will, uh, any other, he will return back to his family or any other family take care of him. So still there is, the danger is there. Maybe he will kill you my, one day. But if we adopt him as a son, no worries. He will be raised in our palace. He will be raised in our system. The belief system, the social system, the political system. He will be your son. No need to kill you. He is your son. Of course, she, can, she cannot tell him when you pass away, because he is God, but he knew that he is going to pass away. So he will be the, 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 the God. Uh, so, so don't worry. No one will hurt your kingdom. Uh, so that's why she includes the, the portion of, uh, or we may adopt him as a son. So because this is his consent. So when, when Musa will become your son, so the fear of uh, he will kill you one day is, has gone. No fears at all. Disappear suddenly. So she understood the consent and she was using this in her uh, negotiation with Fir'aun. This is for the consent. What about the, the needs and the weakness? Uh -huh. Also, uh, what was uh, Fir'aun's weakness? Uh, as the, the historian said that Fir'aun, he didn't have uh, boys, sons. He had only daughters. And subhanAllah, he wished to have a baby boy. He wished to have a baby boy. So she is presenting to him the idea like, wow, it's a good opportunity. We will have a baby boy for our own. Enjoy. Uh, let's think about it. So now he for our, no more. He is not in the fighting mood. Uh, no, he is in the open garden, open doors, uh, talking about his concerns, his needs. Yeah, really. I need a boy, I need a baby boy, and something like this. So this is number four. She understood the concerns, the needs, and weakness of Fir'aun. Also number five, she, and this is a very powerful point also from a very smart lady, very smart wife. She described Fir'aun interest as a common interest, interest, okay? Your interest, my beloved husband, is my interest, is a common interest. So that's why if you go to the ayah, you will find, okay, let's go to the translation. 
he will be a comfort of the eye for me and you together. Uh, or perhaps he may benefit us, me and you. Or we may ad adopt him as son. We may adopt him. We, me and you. I am in your side. We are together. We are a team. We are a happy couple. You are my beloved husband. So don't worry. Don't worry. So this is the five, po five points that uh, um, uh, uh, she mentioned it or she follow it. This is her strategy. Uh, Subhanallah, Asiya radiallahu anha. Number one, she understood Fir'aun's personality and psychology. Number two, she was using a positive language. Number three, she was explaining the benefit of her point of view. Number four, she understood the concerns, the needs, the weakness of Fir'aun. And number five, she described uh, she described Fir'aun interest as a common interest. So from this uh, deep reading for this ayah, my dear sisters, we can conclude that uh, one of the most important skills Muslim women must master, must, must master is convincing skills, negotiating skills, communication skills. It, we can include conflict resolution skills, mediation skills. You are going to tell me, wow, it's too much. Uh, let's say first, why? Why we need, as Muslim are living in 21st uh, century, why we need really this? We need to learn these skills like we need to memorize Quran and to read Quran with the ahkam and to study our fiqh. And we need also these skills. Uh, why? Because uh, there is many reasons. One of the reasons is that the cause of the majority of family conflict and marital conflict is the lack of this type of skills. When you study and you try to find the roots, why we have a lot of family conflict as, as uh, in our Muslim community and a lot of marital conflict, the main cause is the lack of these skills. Of course, dear sisters, we should agree that disagreement is a normal part of life. It can occur between family members, employees, committee members. It's okay. It's normal. The problem is when a simple disagreement turns to conflict. This is the problem. A simple disagreement turns to conflict. We don't know how to stop the conflict cycle. So a simple disagreement turns to conflict because, and we don't have the skills to stop this conflict and uh, live in peace. We don't have the skills. And we keep living, fighting, fighting, fighting between husband and wife, between the parents and the children, between the small family and the big family, between our neighbors, between our sisters and brothers in Islam, in the mosque, in the uh, Islamic center, whatever, in the social media, conflict, conflict. We don't know how to stop this conflict. And we don't know how uh, not turning simple disagreement to conflict. Uh, of course, some people they think that, uh, for example, if we speak about family, because our example of uh, Asiya radiallahu anha, it was a uh, couple matters, it was uh, family matters. So some, some people think that happy family means no disagreement at all. No, happiness is not the absence of problems, but is the ability to deal with these problems. You cannot avoid, uh, it's normal, I mean, to disagree, but we need to know how to manage our disagreement. It's normal to disagree because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us different. We are different. Everyone is unique. Everyone is unique. So we are different in our way of thinking. We are different in our experiences. We are different. We have a different type of personality. So we are different. So 
it's okay to have disagreement, but we need to learn the skills that protect us from conflict and help us to manage our disagreement and don't allow small disagreement to turn to uh, a conflict. So my dear sisters, from this ayah and from this beautiful lady, Asiya radiallahu anha, in this specific ayah, uh, I can see clearly, wallahu a'lam, we have to learn. Learn, number one. Number two, establish the basic of the dialogue in our families. We have to do that. It's like we teach our children to pray and we pray with them to teach them to recite the Quran and we recited them. We need to learn these skills and establish the basic of these skills in our families. I'm not saying, uh, some people they say, oh, we don't have time. Uh, this is not my priority for the moment, uh, many things. I'm not suggesting or advising that everyone must be, um, how to say, certified uh, mediator or a counselor. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like you study your fundamental fiqh, how to do wudu, how to do salat, you have to study this, the fundamental one. And when you have a big issue, you cannot deal with it, go to an expert person. Go to an expert person, why? Because we have, and why I am asking to, to, to study this and to learn this, to, to uh, take some courses uh, about these skills. Uh, if there is workshop, attend this workshop, read books, whatever, have knowledge about this and apply this knowledge. And uh, it's not difficult why, or uh, the second reason why we have to do it, uh, to, uh, number one, to protect our families. And number two is that, um, you know, uh, especially as mothers, we are doing this every day. We are doing this every day. All mothers are mediators. I believe, yeah. All mothers are mothers are mediators. Mother may, in fact, be the original mediators, because what is what is a mediator? A mediator is someone who understands how conflict are created and how conflict uh, turn into dispute. Uh, and also he, he knows, he's someone who knows how to negotiate a resolution that serves both parties' interest well enough to solve the problem. This is the mediator. Okay, some technical problem. Okay, done. So uh, this process of mediating, uh, I think is very familiar to every mother in this planet. Every day, every mother in this world breaks up a fight between a sister and a brother, between her husband and her children. Between... We are doing this every day. So why we need to learn? We need to do it with the ilm, with the correct knowledge. Maybe you are doing it, you are forced to doing it. Always there is battles between your, uh, your son and your daughter. Always there is your battles with your teenager and your husband. You are doing the mediation. You are a mediator, but you don't know how to do it. So you want to solve the problem, you create 10 problems. So since you are doing it, all mothers are mediators, so learn how to do it. It's like you are performing a salat and you don't know ahkamu salat, Allahu Akbar. You accept Islam and uh, you, you believe in Allah and in our, uh, the five pillars of Islam and you don't have time to learn how to pray. Does it make sense? It's like, okay, I love this example. You want to drive a car, okay, good. And then uh, you don't have license. 
And I want to drive the car without license, without learning how to drive a car. You cannot do that. It's the same thing. You are a mediator as a mom. So learn how to do the mediation. So inshallah, so your mediation will be successful. Another reason, the third reason why we need to learn this because and we need to establish it in our family and apply it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hujurat, uh, ayah number 10, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى فَأَصْلِحُ بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ The believers are but brothers. So, so, make settlement between your brothers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, the believers are brothers and sisters. Whenever there is conflict between your brothers and sisters, wajib, you have to do reconciliation. Okay, I'm ready to do it. That's why whenever there is problem, any sister has problem, she will come to me, to you. She will come to the mosque, to the ustada, to the imam. Can you help us? We will help each other. So it's wajib to do reconciliation between our brothers and sisters, to do the salah. But the big question, if I don't know how to do the salah, how can I help them? And this is what happened. Many uh, couples, when they have a problem, or family, when they have a problem, they go, they ask one of the friends or the sisters, or they go to the mosque to ask for help. But if the person, he doesn't know, he doesn't have the knowledge, the, the scientific knowledge, he will keep telling them, okay, sabr, have patience, be good to each other, be nice. But with these words and with his good intention, he is not able, he doesn't have the skill to know what is the root of the problem. What is the root of the problem? And he will deal with the root and he will treat the root. So the problem will not come back. But what he can do, he just give, give good words or deal with the symptoms. And in the end of the day, he gives them a very high dose of painkiller from uh, uh, taqwa Allah and fear Allah, be good Muslim, give a good image and this and this. So the couple will go home with a very high dose of painkiller. They stop fighting for three months, uh, two months. Then the root is there. Then they fight again. Then they return back to the imam or the sister. Or, so that's why knowledge is the key. And since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do reconciliation between our brothers and sisters when we have a conflict, it means it's wajib. We have to learn these things. The, uh, the last point, inshallah, uh, I will mention it, is that uh, we need to learn this, uh, these skills that uh, uh, Asiya radiallahu anha taught us uh, simply my dear sisters, to deserve the name of Muslim, to deserve the name of Muslim. Why? Because in Arabic language, the word Muslim has three meanings. The first meaning, the Muslim, he is the one who surrender to Allah's law, to surrender to, this is the first meaning. The second meaning, the Muslim, he is the one who live in state of peace with himself. He's enjoying his inner peace. The third point, the third meaning is, he is the one who is source of peace for others. One of the way to be a source of peace for others is to master convincing negotiation skills, communication skills, uh, mediation skills, conflict uh, resolution skills, uh, as you can, at least the fundamental, and try to spread it among your society, establish it among your family, and uh, apply it. So in the end, my dear sisters, uh, if we, uh, the summary is that uh, Asya radiallahu anha, he taught us in this ayah the importance of these skills to empower uh, the Muslima, our Muslima today, in this era and in any era, uh, subhanallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give us this knowledge and help us to get this knowledge easily and help us to practice it and help us to be source of peace to, our, to ourselves, to our family, to our Muslim community, to our ummah, 
to al-alami, to the humanity, like the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was rahmatun lil-alameen. We will be, inshallah, like him, rahmatun lil-alameen. Inshallah, jazakum Allahu khayran. Nas'alu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end of this uh, session, inshallah, that he will grant us uh, al-iman and he will show us the right path. Uh, he will show us, inshallah, the right path and guide us to the right path and protect our ummah, our Muslim ummah, and protect all Muslims all over the world, inshallah, and to protect the all humanity and make us rahma for all uh, the humanity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Halima, thank you so much for so much insight into one ayah. I will, it made me think that maybe we need another session for the second time that she's mentioned in the Quran. So maybe we can have you again for part two of uh, Asiya radiallahu anha, right? Uh, uh, salam. Um, so dear uh, participants, if you have any questions, you can write them in the chat box and we will read them for Dr. Um, Halima. Dr. Halima, I had, uh, as you were relating the story, um, Yes, we all know that she adopted Musa alayhi salam. Um, you mentioned the fact about his race, that he was a different race. So mm -hmm. I, that's making me think, you know, I'm also in a group uh, for foster parents and I hope that some of them joined. Uh, there's a group of uh, parents, Muslim parents that are willing to foster and adopt children across North America. And I feel some of them have joined today. And um, one of the issues that comes up is fostering a child of a different race. So I'm trying to understand that, you know, not only is he a different race, but he's also of a different socioeconomic status, right? So I, so how, that, that's what's intriguing in the way you explained that she was able to convince him. I'm just thinking what must have been going through her mind when she, you know, uh, decided to do this and how, you know, Ferron like took him into the home. You know, and you, I know you explained this, but um, we, I guess we don't have any more information about this topic. Uh, from uh, my understanding, this uh, this lady, she was a very smart lady because, you know, uh, she really, she wasn't convinced about what Fir'aun is doing. Mm -hmm. okay? But killing the, the children is not a solution. The solution to, to live in peace, you have to be fair to people. You don't have to be dictator person. Uh, and don't claim that you are God and live peacefully in your life. But what happened is that when uh, uh, Musa reached the palace, uh, this lady, she was a very clever lady. If she will ask only not to kill him, okay, just not to kill him, what will happen to Musa? They will throw them again in the, in the river. No, he will die. They will make, the palace will make announcement to Bani Israel society that we find this baby and he is, we can see from the face, he is from Bani Israel. So who is the family? I'm, I'm sure the majority of the people, no one will, will say that it's mine. Even Musa, mom, she wants to protect the child. That's why she threw him. Uh, in the river, so she, she will just keep silent because otherwise maybe Fir'aun soldiers, they will take her and the, and the sister and kill her. Uh, they are not safe. And um, so what is the solution? The solution is that to be protected, not only temporarily, he will not be killed, no. Asya radiallahu anha, she was a very smart lady. She wants to protect him all his life. How to do that? only to adopt him as son, only to, and he will be Fir'aun's son, God's son. This is the way have So she was, that's why she concentrated on uh, Fir'aun's concerns, Fir'aun's needs, Fir'aun's weakness in her negotiation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it, uh, of course, Allah is the protector. He is al-hafid, he is al-hafid, but he always make causes, make tools. And in this case, uh, Subhanallah, he make he made um, um, this beautiful lady Asia uh, as this is the cause how to save. Why he put it like this? Why he didn't put it like a miracle? Why he didn't change just the face of Musa? But no, he want to teach us. 
he wants to teach us this is a, a learning lesson. This is a case study. I can call it a case study. This lady, she is teaching us. She's doing a workshop and we are sitting and she's taking a case and she is teaching us one, two, three, four. And she's telling me, Halima, don't worry. All the audience, don't worry. I am giving you, I am teaching you and applying on the worst scenario. Your scenario never will be like my scenario. I took the worst. So you, always your scenario is less, but you have to learn how to do it, inshallah. Wallahu a'lam. Yeah, when you talk about scenarios, um, it, when the Quran mentions Fir'aun as the worst human, as the yeah. example, the epitome of the worst person that has ever lived, the mm -hmm. most cruel person, and she lived in the same house as him, and mm -hmm. She's able to convince, and uh, you, you've brought in this communication skills that she's able to convince him, the most mm -hmm. cruel, the most dictatorial person who thinks he's God on earth, you know, yeah. he can make people live, he can make people die, do whatever he likes, and she's able to convince him to not mm -hmm. only save this child, but keep him in his home. SubhanAllah, that in itself is inspirational. Like I myself draw from the fact that she was with a tyrant and how she managed to live with this tyrant and yet believe in God. So one, one question that, um, uh, one question is that if she she uh, started believing in God and is this something that happened after Musa alayhi salam came and said that, you know, there is a God and believe in God and you're not the, you're not the God Pharaoh. And if she, if, if that's the time that she started believing in God, did she- okay. Stay with Pharaoh, or did she leave him? And she did she migrate with Musa alayhi salam? Okay, for uh, for Asiya radiallahu anha, <clears throat> uh, in the beginning, uh, in the first ayah of Surah Al Qasas, what can you can see? Allah is not showing her that she is a believer. No, but He is showing her like she is a fair person a good and original human being. She has uh, humanity values as a human being, you know? So she knows what Fir'aun is doing is wrong. He doesn't have the right to do this. So uh, she is, how to say, uh, perfect or... Um, original human being with the common sense, this is not accept, uh, acceptable. Even in the animal kingdom, the animals don't kill only when they want to, uh, to, uh, to, what? To, to, to eat, they are starving. Okay, uh, and also there is rules for killing, but we are human being. You are afraid that someone will kill you, so you kill? Doesn't make sense. You are afraid that someone kill you in the future. So you are killing all one generation, all the boys of born in this year, doesn't make sense. And year by year, one year he will kill, another year he will. So you are killing half of the generation or more, doesn't make sense. Another point, sure, sure, but this point we will find it maybe in another session when we speak about her, about the second ayah of ayah to tahrim. What is sure is that Asya radiallahu anha, she knows that Fir'aun is not God. You know, the majority of people, they are scared of Fir'aun. Even if they don't believe, they have to believe he is God. Otherwise, they are killed and tortured. But for her as wife, she is the only one that she is, she is sure 100% he is not God. Why? Because she is too close to him. And she can see him when he is sick. He is in pain. Uh, he go to the toilet. Sometimes he, he has food poisoning. He will stay in the toilet. God is not like this. He, he is in needs. Uh, he has need, emotional needs. He has sexual needs. And he will become a very nice and very soft man when he wants to fulfill these needs with her. So she knew he is not God. That's why it was easy for her when Fir'aun come with the Risala, uh, Risala al-Tawheed from Allah. It was very clear for him. 
him for her that yeah i will follow you i will follow you oh i know that my husband he is he claimed that he is god he is not god she is the number one person to know that Fir'aun, 100% he is not uh, God. Wallahu a'lam. Um, Dr. Halima. Yes, my dear. We have a question from Siti Johara Mubarak Ali. She's saying, Assalamu alaikum, sister. Thank you so much for the wonderful lecture. I have a question. If someone keeps on creating conflict and disturbing your inner peace, is it bad to keep away from them? Okay, this is a very general question. What you need, what you need to do? Sometimes uh, someone is co uh, co creating conflict. I will give you an example. There is a fire, la in uh, in your building or whatever. Immediately you call uh, fireman, isn't it, to solve it? To, to <coughs> okay. So this fireman, he will come with his casual uh, clothes, usually? No, he has to wear his uh, clothes, special clothes. Why? What is the purpose? What is the goal? To protect himself from the fire so he can protect and save the life of other people. So when you are in this situation, you have to protect yourself and you have to do your best, okay, to stop the conflict. You have to know why this person, he is creating conflict. What is the roots? And you know how to deal with it. If you cannot do it yourself, go and find someone who can help you. Uh, okay. But, but, but this is another solution, which is not, I am not with this solution 100% because it create this solution, it, it makes the shaitan happy. I have conflict with Sister Jamila. Okay, I keep myself, I keep a distance and uh, salam, salam. I don't care about her, I don't. And, and Jamila has a conflict with Nadia, she do the same thing. And the Nadia, she has a conflict with uh, Saeed, she do the same thing. Where is the Muslim community, my dear? And everybody is claiming my inner peace, my inner peace. How can I, but, but, but I, for my inner peace, I am making the society, I am destroying the unity of the society. So for me, Wallahu A'lam, the answer is that, of course, your, your inner peace is very important. You have to protect your inner peace, but you have in the same time to choose the tool. What is the tool? What is the tool? Protect yourself from any harms, but also the tool is not, whenever you have a, a conflict or someone is creating conflict, you cut the relationship, you cut the relationship. So, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the end of the day, call us, call us ummah. Then in our dua, we always pray for the ummah. Oh, doesn't make sense. I am praying for my ummah and I am part of cutting all the relationships between the ummah. Does it make sense? No, no doesn't make sense so that's why the knowledge is the key this person what is his personality study read about it okay if you have a disease my dear uh, my dear Siti Jawhara Siti Jawhara beautiful name if you have a disease in any organs in your in your body may Allah grant us all uh, health good health uh, do we go to the doctor or we, we do say, okay, no, no, not to the doctor. I don't go, I don't want to go to the doctor. He will ask me and he will try to do blood tests and, uh, and see and scan or x-ray to know what is the, the problem of this disease. No, no, no. I want to go to the surgeon immediately. Take off this organ. We do that. We don't do that. We don't do that. The surgeon is the last choice. We try everything. We try, but to try everything, we need a knowledgeable person. We need a doctor. We need to read about my case. We need to have a first opinion, second opinion. So, so uh, return back to your question, just to keep my inner peace. So my decision is to cut the relationship with all the brothers and the sisters who are causing conflict 
uh, it's not the solution. It's not the solution uh, at all, my dears. The solution is learn and, uh, and apply these skills. You will find uh, uh, the solutions. Because some, sometimes some people, they have, uh, they create problems, for example, Sometimes I am doing some mediation between my students or whatever, some counseling to my students, especially the couples. Um, when you listen to the, to the two party and you, or you have, uh, how to say, a, a session uh, with the, the naughty one, uh, who is described the naughty one, you will find out this, this, this man, for example, or this woman, um, she has a childhood trauma. And she's suffering from some emotional triggers. Whenever these triggers come, she is another person and she creates conflict. When you understand that and you do your best not to, uh, how to say, to, to, to be the cause of these triggers, she's a very good person. And she, she, you can be, have a good relationship with her or with him uh, nicely. But... The key, like I am saying, sisters, is the knowledge, is to have the skill. Wallahu alam. Now, um, sister, uh, sorry, Dr. Halima, this, okay. this is a, do a question we ask all our, our presenters. Why did you choose Asia? Sayyida, Sayyidina Asia, why did you choose her today? Okay. Uh, uh, uh... Asia. Asia is a very well-known uh, lady uh, in a Muslim community, mentioned in the Quran al-Kareem. And many of us give the name of Asia to their daughters. Okay, many see around you, you will find many Asia around you. But only what we know about her, only when we want to talk about her, uh, she's the wife of the Fir'aun and uh, she protected Musa and when he became Nabi, she, she, she believed in, uh, in Aqidat al-Tawheed and Fir'aun tortured her uh, and uh, she passed away. And she made this dua, Ya Allah, uh, Ibn Ali, uh, indaka baytan fil jannah. And she passed away. That's all. Yeah? So do you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned her twice in the Quran al-Kareem? Uh, in one ayah, the first ayah and the second ayah, and uh, as a role model, uh, just to this is this small information. That's all. No. And and Nabi Sallallahu mentioned that she is one of the perfected women, and this is this is the few information of four lines. This is what we can say about her. So I feel that we know her, but by name, but we don't know her. <laughs> And we are not really learning from her ro role model. So that's why I decided I chose her just to show her that she is a role model. And not only she is not giving only uh, to us only the theory, be good, do this, be smart. No, she is giving to us the practical side. I consider this I like a workshop, you know, because see how we can. We, we, we managed to take at least five. If we go deeper, we can find more. And everyone, we can do two, three, four workshops to get the skill and to explain how uh, the psychology and types of the psychology, types of the personality, how we can deal with each personality, the strength and weaknesses of uh, every personality. So now we have the people who are in psychology, they have tests, psychology tests. It's a big field. But for us, we don't know anything. She was very nice. She, has, she had a very good heart. She saved Musa. Then she believed. Then she passed away. Done. Full stop. How can you learn from her? I, I know this story. I know these three lines. And whenever someone asks me, I will answer this. This is not, this is not the objective, why, uh, according to my understanding, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned her in the Quran al Karim. It's a practical role model. And we have to learn from her and apply the Ibn Allah Ta'ala. Um, sister, uh, sorry, Dr. Halima, sister, uh, uh, I don't think we have any more questions coming in. Okay. Um, 
so what we will do is first i'd like to thank you on behalf of being me and the legacy tour team there's a whole team of people supporting this event today um i'd like to thank the it team the research team they're all sitting here taking notes as well and uh, just we'd just like to thank you for giving up your time on a <laughs> sunday <laughs> sunday morning for you saturday night for us and all the people who came today thank my pleasure you. my dear yeah, so um, thank you so much. And you, if you have any comments, you can write them in the chat box and we'll try and keep them. And maybe we might use them to send a thank you to Dr. Halima. So if you'd like to write a comment, you can write it in the uh, chat box. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask little Vanya, if she's available, to do her recitation because we missed out on a recitation due to technical difficulties. Um, Vanya, are you ready to do a, your recitation? Yes. Okay, so first I'd like to introduce Vanya. Her name is Vanya Zafar. She lives in Markham. And her daughter, uh, sorry, Vanya is 10 years old in grade five. She studies at Markham Gateway Public School and she loves to do arts and craft. Her house is filled with arts and crafts. So uh, Vanya, please go ahead and uh, do your recitation. And tell us what you're reciting also, okay? Um, I'm Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I'm reciting Surah Bakra, the last two verses. Billahi min al shaytan al rajim. Bismillahi al rahman al rahim. Amar al Rasul bima anzila ilayhi min Rabbihi wal Mu'min. Kullan amana billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi la nifariqu bayna ahadim min rusulihi wa qalu sami'na wa ata'na wa fanaka rabbana wa ilayka al masir la yukallifu Allahu nassan illa bus'aha laha ma kasabat wa alayha ma ktasabat Rabbana la tuwakhizna in nasina aw akhtakna Rabbana wa la tahmal alayna isran kama hamantahu ala al-lazina min qablina Rabbana wa la tuhammalna ma la taqad lana bih wa'afranna waghfir lana warhamna anta maulana fa'amsurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin Ameen Allahumma shalom Allah, Jazakallah khairan Vanya, MashaAllah, may Allah help you to be inshaAllah muqri'a al-Qur'an al-Kareem and to be saliha, musliha inshaAllah, my dear. Ameen. And may Allah uh, give you the strength and the courage to do what you and protect your family and give barakah to your family for raising such a good little girl. And I see your artwork in the background, Vanya. Thank you for doing the decoration in the background. SubhanAllah. Okay, so on behalf of the Legacy Tour team, I feel like this is the end. And um, uh, we do have some um, events coming up. The next Legacy Tour is coming up on Sunday, November the 1st. Uh, it is with sis, Sister Razia Hamidi, and she will be talking about Razia Sultana. She was uh, the head of the Delhi Sultanate. So we're going to skip forward in a few generations. And uh, Sister Razia, she's her namesake, so she decided to choose her. And it will be nice. We'll be co covering a different geographical area. And I think most of us don't know that uh, during uh, the South in the South Asian uh, empires that we had a female ruler as well. So I'm looking forward to that one. That will be the next one on November the 1st. So please do join us. And we have other events coming up too on um, Being Me. So you can attend. These are, sorry, these are the next legacy tours. The legacy tour is an ongoing, um, uh, uh, ongoing event that we are doing. So we will be adding speakers. We will be adding topics. If you would like the legacy tour, to come to your masjid, we can collaborate with your local masajid. So you can write to be me and you can um, go to attendbm.com to find out all the wonderful events that are taking place with be me for, the, for Muslim women. Okay, so um, I think that's about it. 
So I'd like to thank you everybody for coming today. I will do the dua. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. You know, uh, Dr. Hima, I had a lot more questions in my head, but I kept it short. <laughs> but uh, mashallah, mm -hmm. Sister Diana is saying it's very informative. You took so much out of just one ayah, subhanAllah. That's, uh, that's why that's why we need scholars to be telling us an understanding. You know? Yes. Yes. And also, um, we have uh, if you go to survey dot me dash sorry survey dot being dash me dot org, you can fill out our survey uh, to tell us how we did and if uh, you know if you have any recommendations. It's written in the chat box. Sister Hina is typing it in, so please do survey.being-me.org. Okay, okay, everybody else agreed. Okay, sister Dr. Halima, thank you so much. Barakallah for the invitation, inshallah. Hope to see you, inshallah, again. Barakallah November 7th, we will see. Oh, I forgot to mention that, didn't I? November 7th, we're going to see you for Fatima Al-Fihri. Fatima Al-Fihri, yeah, naam. Inshallah. Alaykum salam wa rahmatullah fi amanillah. Really enjoyed the session. Alhamdulillah. Vanya, thank you for coming.